السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد brothers and sisters invited guests we are very honored uh, to see you tonight we pray allah the almighty will guide all of us and i pray that allah will bless my tongue to articulate what i feel in my heart i want to first say that i think it's befitting that a muslim myself who used to be a christian is going to talk about one of the great and illustrious prophets prophet jesus peace and blessing be upon him i want to remind especially the muslims who are here who used to be christian like myself something that the prophet said peace and blessing be upon him he said idha amana bi isa thumma thumma amana bi falahu ajrani whoever believes in jesus and then believes in me muhammad will have a double reward so for my immigrant brothers who were born muslims i have something over you Before I get into the particulars about uh Jesus peace and blessing be upon him let me give you um some basic um uh, foundation All of my Christian friends who are here tonight I want to say even before I begin that please do not be offended by anything that I say that might appear to you not worthy of the great personality of Jesus peace and blessing be upon him I'm letting you know from the beginning I don't intend to do that I don't think it would happen but sometimes um in our zeal to try to explain our faith we may say something when other people might take it not in such a good way so I want to let you know from the very beginning I apologize if such a thing should happen let me first give you some background Whenever God Almighty sends a prophet to the people it means that something is wrong not that it's something right and usually when messengers come they come in times of darkness and ignorance and it is the job of that prophet to come to the people and take them out of ignorance and bring them to the light of God according to one of our traditions Allah the Almighty has sent on this earth 124,000 prophets in the Arabic language nabi prophet in the plural anbiya 124,000 prophets and among these 124,000 prophets 315 of them were special prophets called rasul or rusul which means messenger 124,000 prophets 315 messengers and of the 124,000 prophets 25 of them have been mentioned specifically in the Quran of the 124,000 prophets 25 of them has been mentioned in the Quran And of the 25 prophets that's mentioned in the Quran, 5 of them is mentioned in a very special way. The greatest, Noah, Noah, Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, Isa, Jesus, and Muhammad. of the 25 prophets mentioned in the Quran five of them mentioned in a very special way Noah Abraham Moses Jesus and Muhammad Allah mentions in the Quran as a Muslim amana rasulu bima unzila ilayhi min rabbihi wal mu'minun 
Kulun amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi. Muhammad believes in what was revealed to him and so do the believers. All of them, every Muslim believes in God Almighty. Every Muslim believes in the angels, the last day. Every Muslim believes in the prophets and the books. Now I want to say something tonight that is critical for us to understand as we move along is that Jews, Christians, and Muslims have something in common. All of them are people of faith. They are people of faith. Jews who believe in the Torah and believe that the Torah was revealed by God Almighty are people of faith. Muslims believe in the Torah as the book of God. And he, Allah, revealed the Torah and the gospel. So as a Muslim, we must believe in the Torah. The Torah revealed to the great prophet Moses, peace and blessing be upon him. And what does Allah say about the Torah in the Quran? Fiha hudan wa nur. And in it, the Torah is guidance and light. So God revealed the Torah to Moses. And God Almighty Allah revealed the Injil or the gospel to Jesus. And what does Allah say about the Injil, the gospel? And in it is guidance and light. You can't get better than that. So what do Muslims believe in? Muslims believe that the Torah is the word of God. It's in the Quran. And the Muslims have a special relationship with Jews and Christians. And they are given a special name in the Quran. They're called Ahli Kitab, the people of the book. Why are they called the people of the book? Because Jews, true Jews, don't do anything unless they get the guidance from the Torah. Why? Because the Torah is from God Almighty. We believe that as Muslims. Christians are called Ahli Kitab. They're the people of the book. Why? Because they follow the book and they don't follow themselves. They follow the book that was given to their prophet, Prophet Jesus. Peace and blessing be upon him. What do we have in common? We people of faith. No Jew living today was on Mount Sinai. Sinai. When God revealed the Torah to Moses. No Jew living today saw the great miracles of God as he took the people, the children of Israel, away from Pharaoh and saved the children of Israel. No Jew today saw the manna and the quails from heaven. None of them witnessed when the Jews were running from Pharaoh and Pharaoh was drowned in the, in the ocean. None was there. But they believe in it. Why? Because they're people of faith. And guess what? Muslims believe it too. Because we are people of faith. We believe in Moses not because we witness one miracle of Moses. No. We believe in Moses as a prophet because the Quran says that Moses was a prophet. No Christian experienced or saw or witnessed the miracles of Jesus. Not one living today. But yet Christians out of faith believe in their book because God Almighty talks about the miracles of Jesus in their book. But they're people of faith. And likewise, today, no Muslim witness, no Muslims witness the miracles of Moses or the miracles of Jesus. But yet every Muslim believes in the miracles of Moses and the miracles of Jesus. Why? Because we witness them? No. But because the Quran says it said it and we believe in it. We're people of faith. Now, brothers and sisters, before we proceed, let me give you one more point that I think is critical. In Islam, we can negotiate about many things. But there are some things that's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. And the one non-negotiable thing 
It's absolutely God is Wahid. God is one. There's no debate. There's no argument. And anyone who makes a partner with God Almighty, then they have violated the worst violation you can imagine. We can negotiate, we can argue about uh, entertainment. Muslims argue about music, to what degree we can participate in music. What music is permissible, what music is not permissible. We can negotiate about that. We can even negotiate to some degree how to pray, which direction to pray. Maybe I believe that that's the direction of Mecca, but someone comes and gives me another argument and turn me that way and thinking that that is the way to Mecca. We can negotiate about that. There are many things we can negotiate about, but the one thing we can never negotiate about, and that is the absolute oneness of God. There's two things. There's Al-Khaliq, the creator, and Makhluk, creation. Everything in the universe is a creation of God. Everything in the universe is a creation of God. And God is al awwal He's first and he's last. There was nothing before him. There's nothing after him. He's the creator. And everything else is creation. And because of that, we have this verse in Quran. I'm going to put it here because we're going to come back to it. I want you to remind me. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Kullu nafsan da'ikatul maut. Every soul shall taste of death. Everything in creation must die. Illa Allah, except Allah. Everything must die. Prophets live and prophets die. Angels live and angels die. In fact, we are taught in the end, the last one to be standing is the angel of death. And then Allah will order the angel of death to die. And everything ever been created will go out of existence. Allah except Allah. We can negotiate about a lot of things, but the one thing we can never negotiate about is the absolute oneness of God. And every prophet, 124,000 of them, all said the same thing. God is one. Do not associate gods with God. Now, let us talk about Prophet Jesus from an Islamic perspective. Allah mentioned in the Quran the similitude of Jesus before God is like the similitude of Adam. And God created Adam from dust and say and said, Be, and Adam was. It is no accident that Adam is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, the similitude of Jesus with God is the similitude of Adam. God created Adam from dust. Let me stop. All of us in this auditorium tonight, Muslim, Christians, Jews, black, white, Americans, non-Americans. Let me say something about us, what the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said. Mankind, all of them are the children of Adam. And Adam was created from the dust. So wherever we are, wherever we come from, one thing we have in common tonight in this auditorium, all of us are human beings and all of us come from our father Adam. And this is why in the Quran we're called the Bani Adam, the children of of Adam because Adam was the first man. I said that Adam is mentioned in the Quran how many times? 25 times. And I said Allah compares Jesus to who? Adam. And guess how many times Jesus is mentioned in the Quran? Exactly 20 
25 times. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. Now I know some of you don't believe me. Here's my Quran. If you like to type, take it and go look in the Quran, but take my word for it. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25, 25 times. And so is Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. Peace and blessing be upon him. Now, brothers and sisters, let me first give you a little bit of information, which is, which is important. How many of you heard of Reverend Al Sharpton? The minister, the Christian minister from, from Brooklyn, New York? You know, last year, Reverend Sharpton discovered something about his family lineage. And he found out that his name Sharpton, that he got from his great-grandfather, and his great-grandfather got his name Sharpton, not from his father, but he got his name from Alexander Sharpton. Who was Alexander Sharpton? Alexander Sharpton was the slave master of the great-grandfather, Reverend Sharpton. So we learn in slavery, black people who were enslaved, the slave master took away their name and gave them the slave master's name. But Allah said in the Quran, Udu'uhum li abaihim, call them by their father's name. Every human being has a right to be called by the name of their fathers. Now, I'll ask you a personal question. How many of you are married? Raise your hand. Okay, good. All right. Sisters, how many of you, don't raise your hand. How many of you are not married but plan to get married? And those of you sisters who, now you can raise your hand. Those of you who, not, not yet. Those of you who plan to get married, how many of you will take on the name of your husband? Raise your hand. Okay. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. In Islam, when a woman marries a man, she's not obligated to take on his name. Why? Because Allah said in the Quran, call them by their father's name. If you look at Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad, she never became Aisha Abdullah. Muhammad, the messenger, was called Muhammad ibn Abdullah, his father Abdullah. He will always be Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. Aisha will always be bint Abi Bakr. She will be the daughter of her father, Abu Bakr. She never changed her name. She was Aisha Zaljatin Nabi. She was Aisha, the wife of the prophet, but she never changed her name. But in this Western society, when a person put their name on you, it meant ownership. Now, 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 wait a minute. Those sisters who married to your husbands, you got their name, it's okay. He didn't mean ownership. But really, if you study Western history, you will find out that when women married men, she became, she became their property. And so that, that tradition has continued. So Allah says, call them by their father's name. And everyone is the, is, the, is the son and daughter of their father. And that's why this illicit relationship is crazy. Some people don't even know their father. According to who? According to who? Who? According to who? Who? World Health Organization. No, that's what it's called. It's called who? Intimacy between men and women happen a hundred million times a day on this earth. A hundred million times a day on this earth. And it's rumored that a lot of it takes place in New York City. But that's just another issue. And as a result of that, 810,000 conceptions a day on this earth. That results in 350,000 sexually transmitted diseases a day on this earth. That results in 150,000 abortions 
every day on this earth. And there are a lot of men, girls and boys who don't even know their father. So it's possible, for instance, you can be, for instance, a governor of New York, for instance. No, I'm just saying. No, I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And, and, and let's say you just, you know, go meet someone at the Mayflower Hotel. I, I, no, no, I'm just saying. No, I'm not. I'm just saying something. Right? And maybe there's some conception. And she's not going to say, a governor, guess what? No, that's a, that's a different topic. I forgot what topic I was thinking. So call them by their father's name, and every child has a right to know their daddy, have a right to know who their father is. Then if every person is called by the name of their father, how come? How come in the Quran it says Isa ibn Maryam? Isa ibn Maryam. Jesus, the son of Mary. All throughout the Quran, Jesus, the son of Mary. How come Jesus is not known by the name of his father? Because he had no father. And you will learn today, there are things in the Christian theology where Muslims agree 100%. I'm going to talk about those. And then you're going to find out that there are things that the Quran mentions that the prophet's traditions mention that's not even mentioned in the Bible. Miracles about Jesus that you didn't even know about, that Muslims know about. I'm going to talk about that. And then finally, we're going to talk about a few differences. Remember, tonight is not a debate. We're saying that this is Muslims' view of Jesus. This is an Islamic view of Jesus. It's a Quranic view. It's how the Muslims view Jesus according to the Quran. It's how the, Jesus, the Muslims view Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, according to the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And some of you non-Muslims will be amazed of what's going to come out of my mouth in the next few moments. Jesus, the son of Mary. Now let me stop here and say this. What name on this earth is the most popular name? What name? There's no debate, no argument, that the most popular name on this earth is Muhammad. Right now, Muhammad is the second most populated name in all of the United Kingdom. Everywhere you go, people talk about Muhammad and take on the name Muhammad. Muhammad is a beloved name of Muslims. How many of you in this audience Either your first name, your middle name, or your last name is Muhammad. Raise your hand. Look at this. Come on. Look at that. I mean, come on. I know someone who loved Muhammad so much, his name is Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. <laughs> Love Muhammad. You can't help it. Right? It's, it's, look, they, they love Muhammad. And usually, when you take on the name of someone, it's a, it's a badge of honor. You respect them. You, you, you love them. You honor them. Now, It is not surprising that among Muslims, there are Muslims who take on the name of Isa, Jesus, out of respect and love for Jesus. It's no different than Muslims taking on the name of Musa. How many of you know a Muslim with the name Musa? Musa means Moses. Moses is a great prophet. We love Moses. So Muslims take on the name. How many here tonight name Moses, Musa? All right. Muslims take on the name of Abraham, Ibrahim, Khalilullah, the friend of God. How many of you know Muslims with the name Abraham? Raise your hand. Look at that. How many here tonight name Abraham? All right. Sister raising her hand. Your name is Abraham? So Muslims with the name Isa, Muslims with the name Moses, Abraham, Muslims with the name Yaqub, Jacob. I know Muslims with the name Yaqub, Jacob. Everywhere you see Muslims with those names. Now, I would argue that Khadija is a very popular name among Muslim women. True? 
Khadija is a very popular name, the name of the prophet's wife. Aisha is a popular name among Muslim women, true or not? I would argue that the name Miriam is as popular a name among Muslim women as any other name. Am I right? Miriam, how many here are named Miriam? Ah, ha, ha. Wait a minute, raise your hand. One, raise them up. Two, three. So you see, four, she, she just remembered. <laughs> now, what does that mean? It means that Muslims respect Miriam. The 19th chapter of the Quran is entitled Mary, Miriam. So there's no doubt about it. Muslims love and respect Jesus. They name their children after him. They name themselves after him. They name themselves after his righteous mother. And let me tell you what the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said about, about Mary. He mentioned two perfect women. One of them, Asiya. Believe it or not, the wife of Pharaoh. Perfect woman. And the second one, Miriam, the mother of Jesus. Two perfect women. Now, remind me to come back to what, the second verse. My brother who recited the Quran, he recited in the very beginning by saying, Inni Abdullah. Put that there for a minute. I'm going to come back to that. If the most popular name on earth is Muhammad, I'm going to ask you a second question. What name is most beloved to God? Is it Muhammad? It's not what the Prophet said. What name? Ahabu illallah. Most beloved to God. What name? Hmm? Abdullah. Abdullah means the servant of God. The most beloved name to God is Abdullah, Abdurrahman, the servant of the beneficent, the servant of God. Why? Because Abdullah, if you study the Quran, there's a verse what the French would call les zones d'etre, the very purpose of life. God said, I have not created spirits or human beings except to worship me. It is God's right to be worshipped by everybody. Jinn, spirits, and human beings to worship God. Who must worship God? Everybody from the prophets on down. Because there's one thing that's non-negotiable in Islam, and that is God is one, and everyone must worship God the Almighty. Now, the Christians refer to Jesus as the Word. And brothers and sisters, the more I study, the more I've come to the conclusion that there are many facts that Muslims and Christians especially agree upon but where we differ is the interpretation I'll give an example Christians teach that Jesus is the word Muslims absolutely believe that Jesus is the word of God it's called Kalimatullah the word of God and there's many evidences from Quran and from Sunnah uh, it's called in the Quran Kalimatullah wa ruhu minhu He's the word of God and a spirit from him. Now, what do you mean as a Muslim that Jesus is the word of God? Since you say that Jesus didn't have a father, how did he come into existence? Allah said, Kun, be. And Jesus was. And Mary was pregnant. And she carried him. Jesus was born from a virgin. Some might interpret it to mean that because he's God, therefore his birth must be a different 
uh, uh, way other than the regular birth or regular uh, coming into existence. Interpretation. Now, there's a miracle in the Quran that the Quran mentions that you don't find in the Torah and you don't find in the Injil. And that is when Jesus was born, Jesus spoke from the cradle as a baby. And when Jesus was born, the people, they looked at Mary accusingly because they knew she didn't have a husband. How could you have this? And your father and your mother, your mother's not a prostitute. How could you have a baby without a man? And what did Mary do? She pointed to the baby Jesus. How can we speak to him? He's a, he's a baby. How can we speak to him? And Jesus spoke. And Jesus' first words were, Inni Abdullah. Not insignificant. I am the servant of God. I am the servant of God. I am the servant of God. Not the son of God. Not divine. I am the servant of God. I'm going to ask you a few questions. How many Muslims believe that Jesus raised the dead? Raise your hands. Look at this. Muslims raise their hand. A miracle of Jesus raising the dead. And yet Muslims, they raise their hand and say, yes, we believe that Jesus Raise the dead by the permission of God. How many of you believe that Jesus cured those born blind? Raise your hand. Muslims raising their hand. They didn't see Jesus perform the miracle, but they believe that Jesus touched the eyes and the people were able to see. How many believe that Jesus cured those who had leprosy? Raise your hand. Look at this. Muslims believe it. Why? Because it's in the Quran. They didn't witness it. God mentions it in the Quran. Muslims don't hide it. It's true. It's real. It's there. He did it. How many Muslims believe? Or how many of you believe that Jesus turned water into wine? Raise your hand. Uh-oh. 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 Where those hands go? How many believe Jesus turned water into wine? One. You, my good brother, raise your hand. No, you. Yes. Yes. You had no idea I was going to call on you, did you? He said, what the heck I get myself into? Why do you believe that Jesus turned water into wine? Ha! Hmm. Sister, you mentioned that you believe Jesus turned water into wine. Why? No, don't turn around. You. Why do you believe it? You learned it somewhere. It was when you went to church that Sunday. That's when you learned it. <laughs> Muslims don't deny it. But because we can't verify it, we silent. Because one of the things that the Quran does is called Musaddiq. Musaddikun lima ma'akum. It verifies what is with you. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, had so much respect for the Injil and the Torah, he gave advice to his followers. He said, Let to Sadiku ahli kitab, wa let to kadibuhum, wa lakin kulu amana billah. Don't verify what the people of the book say, but don't deny it. We don't say that Jesus didn't turn water into wine. We say because Allah didn't say it and the prophet didn't mention it, we are afraid to attribute something to Jesus that may not be true. So we want to be careful because we believe that some of the things have been changed. So therefore, we want to be careful not to say that Jesus did such a thing or said such a thing, but then we don't want to deny it. So we are, we're silent on it. Now. 
a miracle that the Quran mentions that the Bible doesn't mention, the Torah doesn't mention, the gospel doesn't mention. Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, took clay and made an image of a bird. And he blew in the clay and the clay became a living bird. A miracle that's in the Quran that the Bible doesn't mention. You will see that Muslims don't try to diminish Jesus or what he's done. But in fact, the Quran and the Sunnah seems to give more ammunition to the Christians, but then give it interpretation. Now let me tell you the, the, the one that's going to blow your mind. What do you have to do when you go and sit on a plane what do the flight attendants tell you? Put your seatbelts on. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make sure you got your seatbelts on. Ready? You got them on? Let me check. <laughs> Our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Every human being that's born is touched by Satan at his birth or her birth and they cry out because of that touch. Every human being that's born is touched by Satan. Every human being at birth is touched by Satan illa except two people. And who are the two people? Who are the two people? Who are the two people? Yes. Mary and Jesus. The only human beings never touched by Satan at birth. This hadith, this tradition, muttafakun alayhi, muttafakun alayhi, sahih, in al-Bukhari and Muslim and other places. If you don't believe me, you want to check it out, I want you to get Bukhari hadith, volume number four, Kitabul al Anbiya in the book of the prophets, and under Asa, under Jesus, you will read what the prophet said about him. Peace and blessing be upon him. So you will learn this about our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He doesn't shy away from telling the truth, he doesn't hide or diminish the miracles of Jesus. Now, what's up here? Hmm? Ha, ah, thank you. Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. Every soul shall taste of death. Question, Muslims. What happened to Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him? What happened to him? Mata, he died. What happened to Abraham? Mata, he died. What happened to Musa? Mata, he died. What happened to Noah? But didn't you tell me he lived to be 950 years? Huh? But what happened after that? He died. Muslims, what happened to Jesus? He's still alive. Hayyun. Jesus has never died. This is the belief of the Muslims. How Christians and Muslims differ? Christians believe that Jesus died on the cross. And Jesus was resurrected last Friday, Good Friday, the celebration of the death of Jesus. And this past Easter, the holiest day of the Christians, when Jesus was resurrected. Our belief is similar, almost. Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا سَلَبُوهُ They didn't kill him, they didn't kill Jesus, nor did they crucify him. Bal Rafa Ilehi Rafa Ilehi No God raised Jesus up to himself. Muslims absolutely believe in the ascension of Jesus. Jesus ascended, and right now Jesus is in heaven. But wait a minute, Mr. Speaker, you said what? Every soul must die except God. But you said that Jesus 
a thousand, two thousand years ago was raised up in heaven, he didn't die. Ha, we got you. You got us, right? But that doesn't mean he's not going to die. Jesus must die. We're going to come back to that in a minute. What was Jesus? In the Quran, Jesus is called the Nabi, a prophet. But then he was more than that. He was a Rasul. 124,000 prophets, Nabi. 315 Rasul, messengers. So Jesus was a Nabi and a Rasul, like many prophets. Muhammad was a Nabi and a Rasul. Moses was a Nabi and a Rasul. Isa, a Nabi and a Rasul. But there is something about Jesus. I have looked and I have not found this title except with Jesus. In the Quran, Jesus is referred to 11 times with this title. El Masih. El Masih, El Masih. El Masih. Eleven times in the Quran. No other prophet called El Masih. Now, what does Christ mean? What does Christ mean? Anointed. Anointed. Muslims think that Christians take their name from Jesus. They don't take their name from Jesus. They're called Christians. They take their name from the anointed one. In Hebrew, it would be Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Do Jews believe in Jesus as a prophet? No. Do Jews believe in Jesus as a Messiah? No. Why don't they believe in him as a Messiah? Huh? Why? Why don't they believe in him as the Messiah? Because why? Huh? Huh? No. No. Yes. Yeah. He didn't do the job of the Messiah. The Messiah was supposed to come and bring peace on the earth. He didn't do it, so he's not the Messiah. But why must Jesus come back? This stuff is good, man. I mean, really, honestly, this stuff is, this is delicious. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you about whom we worship, whom the Christians and the Muslims and the Jews worship. Because Allah said in the Quran, Ilahuna uh, wa ilahukum wahid. Your God and our God is one. Our God and your God is one. There's only one God. We, 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 sometimes we get it wrong, you know. Why? Because we're people of faith. We believe. We believe, you believe, and we believe. Now, Allah says in the Quran, وَلَكِنَّ Allah يَفْعَلُ مَا يُرِيدُ And God does whatever He wants to do. You believe that? Now, look throughout history. And see how Allah, God, has saved his prophets. Moses, he saved them from Pharaoh in a miraculous way. He saved the children of Israel. They went across the Red Sea, and he drowned Pharaoh and the, uh, his soldiers. Look at Abraham. Abraham was about to be thrown in the fire. And Allah ordered the fire to be cool. Abraham didn't die in the fire. Why? Allah does what he pleases. Everyone tonight agree that God can do whatever he wants. True? He has the power. But hasn't God Almighty allowed some prophets to be murdered? It's in the Quran. Some prophets were murdered. It's in the Torah. It's in the Bible. The cousin of Jesus, what was his name? Yahya. Uh, uh, John. John the Baptist. 
it's reported that he was murdered. He was beheaded. Other prophets had died. God not able to save them? Of course he was. He was able to save them, but he didn't. Why? For his reason. His reasons are beyond us. This is what makes him who he is. We, you know, I was uh, uh, at the airport and um, I had just come back from, uh, from a trip in the Guadi airport and I got a cab and the cab driver was listening to a, a radio station and a, and a preacher was preaching and I'm listening to the sermon and the preacher says something like this well if, if I were God I would have done it this way and I said no if you were God you'd do the same way God did it because that's what making God you, you see we I mean we're right we so why did God do it that way? Not only did Allah save Jesus, but he saved them in a very special way. He raised them up to himself, and Jesus is in heaven. One of the things that Jesus called in Quran, and by the way, I'm working on my conclusion. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, we're about to land soon. So make sure your seatbelt's on. Allah mentions in the Quran, uh, that Jesus is a sign of the sa'ah, of the hour. Jesus is a sign of the hour. And according to our tradition of our Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, the day of judgment will not happen until there are some signs. And one of the signs is the return of Jesus. Muslims absolutely believe in the return of Jesus. Jesus has to come. Why? He has to fulfill the Messiah. He has to come, and Jesus will be a just ruler. It's there. We believe it. See, we're not hiding it. Jesus will come to this earth as a just ruler. Why? He's al Masih. He is the Messiah. And it will come about, and Jesus will come about, and he's not going to teach a new teachings is going to be the same teaching that we have, the teaching of the last book of Al-Qur'an. And Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, will bring about justice on this earth. And according to what our prophet taught us, peace and blessing be upon him, there is no more difficult trial to human beings than what is called Ad-Dajjal, what you call the Antichrist. Antichrist is real. He will bring havoc on this earth called the Antichrist. And lo and behold, who will put an end to the Antichrist? Is Jesus. Is Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, is a huge test for us like everyone else. Allah the Almighty will ask Jesus on the day of judgment. Now remember when God asks a question, he doesn't ask because he doesn't know. He asks, teach us. Did you tell the people to worship you? You and your mother as gods besides Allah. And of course Jesus will deny that. Because no prophet ever have told people to worship me. No prophet. It's unbefitting for a prophet to say, worship me. It's unfitting for any prophet to say other than worship the Almighty. We believe that Jesus worshiped the Almighty and taught the people to believe in him. I need somebody to help me. I'm almost finished. Somebody help me. What day is today? Thursday, March 27, 2008 AD. Good. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we don't think about what we be saying. I mean, just think about it for a minute. March. What's March? Where did March come from? Mars the God of war. Thursday, 
You don't mean Thursday, you mean Thor's day. Thor. Frigg's day. Saturn day. Sunday. Moon day. Tyre's day. Wooden's day. I gave you enough, go study it. <laughs> Serious. When you wake up and see the tricks that have been played on human beings, you'll be shocked. What do you mean 2008 A.D.? What does A.D. mean? Anno Domini. What does Anno Domini mean? The year of our Lord. There's only one Lord. That's God. Now, brothers and sisters, I'll leave you with this thought. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said this, and I close with this. He's talking to his companions and he said, I hope that you will be one half the people of paradise. I hope that you, Muslims, my followers, will be one half the people of paradise. Hmm. 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 If he said, I hope you will be one half the people of paradise, who are the other half? Ha, ha, ha. Think about that for a minute. I'm going to rest here for a minute. Huh? Hmm? What? Who the other half? Who are the other half? If he said, I hope that you, my followers, the followers of Muhammad will be the other half. Who the other half? And I want to tell you this, brothers and sisters, you'd be shocked to learn that many prophets didn't have many followers. Who did the Uman? The prophet said, I was shown all of, the, all of the, uh, the nations, and I saw some prophets who had a handful of uh, followers. I saw a prophet that had one or two followers. I saw prophets who had no followers. Who the other half? The other half are the true followers of the prophets, the true followers of Jesus the true followers of Moses, the true followers of Abraham and Noah. But now we got a dilemma. And what's the dilemma? Many people may believe that they're following their prophet only to learn that they're not. Because there's one thing that's non-negotiable. God is one. Allah mentioned in the Quran, they have disbelieved who said that Jesus is the Son of God. They have disbelieved who say that Jesus is God. Jesus is beloved by us, one of the most honorable, respected of those near to God in this life and the hereafter. But he's not God, nor the Son of God. The job of the Muslims and, and, and let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, you got a big job as Muslims. You have a huge job. Let me tell you why your job is so big. Because we have the last revelation, we believe. Why? We people faith. Because we believe that we have the last revelation, we can check those who came before us. And those who came before us, the mistakes that they made, not Jesus. Jesus didn't make no mistakes. In fact, let me tell you something. Let me give you another tidbit. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, you have to be uh, like uh, uh, detectives when you look at scripture. And sometimes hints are, are, are given. On the day of judgment, when the people are about to be punished, and the people are going to look for help, and they're going to go to the prophets, they're going to go to Adam, alayhi salat wa salam, to seek intercession. And you know what? Adam will say, nafsi, 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 idhabu ila ghayri. I don't, I'm concerned about myself. And then Adam will mention the faults that he did, eating from the tree. Idhabu ila Nuh, go to Noah. Noah will say, nafsi, 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 oh myself, myself, I'm concerned about myself. He will mention his mistakes. Idhabu ila Ibrahim, Ibrahim will mention his mistakes. Musa will mention his mistakes. And when they come to Jesus, Jesus will say, but no tradition will you ever read that Jesus mentioned any mistakes. 
see? It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a subtlety that you got to see it. So we can't attribute anything to him at all, wrong at all. Everything Jesus did was right and exact. The problem is when God took Jesus from him. And then some people begin to mistranslate what Jesus had. You know something else about Jesus that makes him really special? Allah says, يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةُ وَالْتُرَاءُ وَالْإِنْجِيلُ And we will teach him the book and the wisdom and the Torah and the Injil. And then he will come back on the day of judgment. And he will be a believer in Al-Quran. Before the day of judgment, he'll come back and believe in, in Al-Quran. So brothers and sisters, that's our story, and I'm sticking to it. Assalamu alaikum.